Number one, pretty straightforward, I hope, this x cubed, we take it first, does it become x to the 4 on 4? Thumbs up, uh, in, index up, divide, minus 3, does that turn into minus 3x? And then the constant of integration is hanging around. So we're happy with A. Cool. Now, um, B, who put B up? Okay, Eddie, thank you. Now, who had their answer looking like that exactly? Anyone? One? Just one other? Okay, interesting. Um, if you did it another way, or um, let me ask this, who expanded this thing? A few more hands, but still not everyone's. Okay, in, I'm interested if you either did that or came up with this answer. Let's have a think about how this came about because this is the most efficient way I can tell by the way it's written, okay? When we have a go at this, yes, we could expand, but if I can avoid it, I will because expanding is a long process and then I have to begin integrating. So it's like two things that I have to do. I'd rather do just one. I can use the rule we developed a couple lessons ago, which is the reverse chain rule. Here's a function, right? And you're applying a different function to that, okay? So I'm gonna try and undo reverse chain rule. Let's have a go at how he did it. Um, you've got this x on three plus two, and uh, the power used to be two. When we're doing reverse chain rule, what happens to, I should say, index? The index goes to plus one, so it's now a, it's now a three, okay? But then, the next step is, just like with this x to the four on four, you, you divide by the new power. Okay, so then we get a three. Now, at this point here, I've taken care of the outside, the squared bit, but I haven't taken care of the inside. The inside, the chain function, chain rule rather, does the inside and the outside. Reverse chain rule also has to do the inside and the outside. What is the inside derivative in this case? It's uh, one, over one over three, right? So this inside derivative, one over three, what do I do with it? I divide by that. Now this is actually sneaky. A few of us have sort of been caught up because when you integrate, you're going to get fractions. These kind of happen all the time, okay? And I've been admittedly mean to you by giving you a function, an integrand, that will land you with fractions on fractions. If you're dividing this thing by a third, then the one third appears in the denominator because the denominator is the thing doing division, right? So you can see here, once I had my, add my constant of integration, which is always there, you can see how we get from here to the answer that Eddie's written. Are you happy with that? Okay. Um, you can, of course, go ahead and expand all of this, um, provided you do the expansion correctly. You'll still end up with this, but it'll look different because presumably yours will be an expanded form. This is, um, this is factorized. Okay. All right. Last one. Uh, having a look at this answer here. Was that you, Moe? Yeah. That was your answer? Okay. Um, who's got that answer? A few, okay, just to quickly get how he did that. Um, there's really one key thing you need to do with this before you just proceed as usual. We haven't been given the integrand in a nice form to work with. What should we do with it? Okay, so we can take this part of the numerator, divide through, separate it out. 4x squared divided by x gives us 4x. Sorry, uh, the integral sign is still there because I haven't done it yet. Um, x divided by x, I can deal with that part, which is just one. And now that I've written it in a much neater form, hopefully it's now clear to you where this came from. The index has gone up, he's divided by that new index, the four divided by the two leaves him with two, and then off he goes from there. So, thumbs up, are you happy? Okay, well done, okay. Well done, but we really need to work enough fluency there. That took us way too long, okay. Can I ask you to rule that off? and make a new heading, which is integrating exponential functions. I was wrong. <laughs> Though you could have been right. I mean, it was a good guess. It's a good guess. Okay. Now, you will recall, we keep on saying it to try and drill it into your head, everything we know about integration, at least so far, everything we know about it we know from differentiation. We know how to differentiate exponential functions. In fact, they're delightfully easy to differentiate because if I gave you a function like, say, this, you could say it's derivative because you don't even, you almost have to do nothing. What is the derivative of this guy? What's, it's, it's e to the x. That's kind of the special thing about this specific exponential function that when you differentiate it, uh, you just get back itself, okay? So since we have a statement about 
differentiation here, right? Um, we can make an equivalent or a parallel statement about integration. Yeah. What if I asked you to integrate e to the x with respect to x? What would you expect? E to the x over x plus <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You would you would go back where you came from with one subtle difference, which is that constant of integration. Because e to the x plus one, e to the x minus five hundred, they would all still differentiate and land us here. Okay. Ah, can you say that again louder, Serene? E to the x over x plus 1. E to the x, I'm just going to write this down so that I have it in my head. E to the x on, did you say x plus 1? x plus 1. Okay, now, um, I wasn't going to make this stop, but it's because it was mentioned, it's a good one. This is an error which crops up all the time. This is, in fact, not the integral, um, but it's, it comes up frequently enough that it's worth mentioning. Where does this come from, by the way? This has not come from nowhere. Why might we think, like, why do we, are we in the habit of, like, dividing? What do you, is that? We, we, we've been doing that a lot, haven't we, right? But why is that? What kinds, what family of functions have we been dealing with so far? They're not exponentials. What would you call all of these? Starts with a P. Mm. Uh, we, we end up, sorry. Bad, yeah. I badly phrased the question. We end up with a primitive, but what we were taking was a polynomial. The primitive ends up being a polynomial too. These are not polynomials. They're exponentials. So they behave quite differently. We don't, and you might have, you know, another common error is that. It's like increase the index by one and then divide by that. But this is a whole different kettle of fish, okay? X is not in the base at all. It's in the index, okay? Uh, let's see if we can push on this using, you know, this reverse chain rule stuff didn't just apply to polynomials. It also applied to exponentials. So just to get your brain back in gear, if I asked you, and I'm going to ask you to do this right now. If I asked you to differentiate, say, this. 3e3x plus c. Okay, so you're doing again inside and outside. It's just the inside is up there in the index. So its derivative, as Serene said, is 3. Okay, I've differentiated that part, and now I do the outside. It's just an e to the power of, it's an exponential. You just hand back that exponential. Now, because on this line, I've differentiated, right? So is there any plus C? No. Not at this point. We, don't, we didn't need that for derivatives. But now, when I integrate, it'll be a different story, right? So now let's just take that same function. Let's try integrating. We know integrating undoes everything that differentiation does. Here, I multiplied by the inside derivative. What do you think I should do here to undo that? I should divide. Division's the opposite of multiplication. So I'm dividing by what? Three, so I'll, I'll just write a third out the front. That's me dividing by three. And then I've got to deal with this. What happens to that exponential? It just comes back to being itself, right? So it's e to the three x. And now, because I'm integrating, constant of integration, okay? And again, I implore you, a lot of you are asking me like, oh, have, have I got it right, okay? It's not just worth it so you don't have to wait for a teacher to come around, but it's worth it for you to flex your differentiation muscles to just have a look at this and say, if I differentiate this, am I going to, bless you, am I going to land back at the integrand I came from? What's going to happen? Yeah, that three, just like here, it's going to come out the front. Three. Uh, the one third e to the three x is still there. What happens to the plus c? It's gone, I can disregard it because it's constant. Uh, and there, thankfully, is what I was hoping for. This is just me proving to myself, oh yeah, I did get it right because this is what I was supposed to um, integrate, okay?